Uh, my name is Matthias Burgi. I'm a DevOps engineer at La Mobiliere. Hello everyone, my name is Fabian Hutzli and I'm also a DevOps engineer at La Mobiliere by day, tech on just by night, and somewhere in between I try to automate everything in my life, including my coffee breaks. So, we were, both work at La Mobiliere, uh, which is founded, or was founded in Bern in 1826 and is the oldest private insurance company in Switzerland. It is still organized as a cooperative. We are around 6,000 employees, 600 of those are working in the IT department. So, but let's talk about uh, automating our uh, builds and deployments uh, for SharePoint. Uh, in the, in the last community calls, my colleague Nello showed a few solutions in our Punta Bello uh, internet showcase. And Nello's solutions are really great, but each and every one of them has some different requirements for deploying to SharePoint. The multilingual document cards require some additional fields in the document library, user apps, solution needs two lists with custom permission and so on and so on. And we need to make sure that exactly the same configuration that was tested on our test tenant is then later on deployed to production. So we set out to create our um, Punto Bello installer, which is a set of tools and scripts uh, to deploy our solutions in a, in a standardized way so that we can deploy the solutions like consistently and uh, in a repeatable manner. Um, so the implementation that we did for this uh, Punto Bello installer consists basically of three parts. We will demonstrate them in a minute. Uh, at the core is, is a, a Docker image containing all the required tools and the required versions. And by the way, uh, we support both AMD and ARM processor architecture mainly because Fabian insists on working on a Mac. <clears throat> uh, and on top of that is a set of scripts that we, that we uh, wrote for deploying and building the solutions and provision all the SharePoint sites and templates and so on. And, and one target was also that, you know, that the installer could be used in different scenarios, whether locally in a dev container or even as a CI, uh, in a CI CD pipeline. So uh, uh, Fabio will show you how that looks. Thank you, Matthias. I'm taking over the screen and sharing my Visual Studio code. So in my Visual Studio code, I already loaded the uh, Punta Bello user apps. Um, Nello did a presentation about uh, our solutions in the last uh, community call, so you already know that one and maybe the multilingual one. Um, in here we have um, two uh, SPFX solutions, one extension and one web part, and we already included the Punta Bello installer, which is a separate um, GitHub project as a dev container uh, in here, in this project with the uh, Git submodule logic. And in this, we have uh, three parts. One part is the script folder, which includes all the scripts that we need for deploy a SharePoint artifact, so, such as lists and sites and all the SPFX solutions. Then we have uh, the Docker file that uh, Matthias already mentioned, and we also have the dev container configuration. Before you can use the installer, you have to uh, configuration. You have to configure all the related settings that you need for the for the installer um, in the config uh, PSM one. That's a PowerShell module, and here we have um, the logging. Uh, preferences, so you can choose if you want to see anything or nothing in the in the terminal when the script are running. Then we have a, a node module, a node environment variable that you can set to development, pre-prod, prod, what you like. Then you have the tenant name. For our purposes in the demos, we use the Punta Bello tenant, and then we set also an admin user, which is administrator on this tenant. Then we already included a lot of uh, PNP login methods uh, using that login selector. So if you want to use, for example, an enter ID app registration with app secret, you have to set the app ID and the app secret in the login selector uh, for the one. And if you want to choose another, for example, an app, enter app ID, 
the uh, entry ID app registration with a certificate, you can choose the login select to three and set the appropriate uh, settings in this configuration here. And all that thing are loaded in the in an additional module that is uh, the login PowerShell module, and this one creates the corresponding uh, PNP credential uh, variable that is then loaded to the connect PNP online command. Then we have also a Docker file that Matthias already mentioned that is um, uh, able to handle both architecture, uh, AMD and ARM. And we part this Docker file in two pieces. One piece is the installer environment, which um, installs just PowerShell um, binaries so that we can use the install installation of the binaries then for our final image. and. Uh, that we don't use a lot of overhead in this image. Then our final image is a, a Marine-based image that is using uh, Node.js in ver version 18. And this is our final image. And in this, we install different tools that we see here as arguments. So SPFX will be installed, Yeoman, um, 365 CLI, PNP, and Azure PowerShell modules. And then we copy, as I already mentioned, the PowerShell binaries from the installer environment that uh, on the top of the that is on the top of the Docker file, and then we also include uh, Terraform, Azure CLI, and last but not least, uh, Azure Developer CLI. So you have all the tools that are really awesome from the Microsoft community, all packed in one Docker file. Then additionally, uh, that we not run the doc file in a root context, we also create an additional user that we called node. And um, everything that the user is needed uh, to run the scripts will be then um, handled at the bottom of the Docker file. Yes, and to run the uh, Docker file in Visual Studio Code as a dev container, we also have the configuration of this Docker file that will be built by starting the dev container. You can set the argument for the architecture, so RM or AMD. Then we install additionally the Visual Studio Code extension so that you can use um, a seamless integration of Visual Studio uh, in the dev container. And we also bind some ports that are the SPFX standard ports so that you can use the Docker container also for debugging SPFX solutions. And what the scripts are doing is now showing Matthias. Okay, so um, as I said before, the goal is really to have everything in one place and we have one solution, one installer that works for all um, a solution that um, Nello can think of and throw at us. So what we decided is uh, for a folder structure where we have the a folder for each solution in a project and then an aptly named folder called SPO containing all the SPO uh, SharePoint online information and configuration. So at, at the very heart um, of all the deployments is a file called solution JSON, um, which uh, describes everything uh, that needs to be built or deployed and provisioned and so on. It actually, uh, yeah, it's a very simple JSON file. Um, we define all the sites where solutions are being uh, installed with some additional properties in case that we need to actually create the site. Then we have a, an array of, of solutions that uh, are to be deployed to the site. And then we define all the templates, which we will then uh, deploy by using invoke PNP site template. Uh, in case there are some dependencies and one deploy, um, template needs to be installed uh, before another, uh, one can uh, define a sort order if that is required. Um, obviously, you can define multiple sites and so on. And then there's a term store section as well. Uh, so if there is a solution that needs specific terms or uh, term set, what, whatever, that could be defined in here. Now, in this example here with the uh, user apps, uh, no terms are required. Uh, furthermore, we have an asset uh, folder where we just uh, have all the uh, templates, site uh, template or page templates, list templates, and so on, uh, which are then referenced in solution JSON. Going to the dev container folder, uh, as Fabian said, that is actually a submodule uh, mapped into this uh, dev container, so a submodule uh, pointing to the uh, Pontobello installer. Uh, we have the scripts folder, and uh, 
uh, we have basically three scripts, uh, uh, build SharePoint web part, deploy sites and list, and deploy SharePoint web part. Uh, you can run those three scripts and everything uh, should be up and running and working as expected. I go very quickly uh, into the scripts. So they are all very similarly um, built. We always test for, for the environment. So we, we need to know whether we are running in a Docker container or not. Uh, importing the config PSMA, uh, PSM1, which showed um, Fabian before uh, with a lot of environment variables and so on. And then we just parse the solution JSON. We look for the solutions in the file. Uh, we make sure that we don't have any duplicate solutions in there. And then we switch to the corresponding folder, run an npm install, build uh, the solution, and that's basically it. Uh, same for deploy sites and list. Are we in a Docker? Yes or no. Importing all required uh, functions and then uh, first checking if there are terms to be uh, configured, doing that, and then looking for uh, for sites defined in the solution JSON. We have a small function which uh, asserts that a site collection does exist. If it's not there, it will be created. And then we iterate through the templates and just invoke site template one after the other to configure everything that's required. Here's maybe a little bit uh, an edge case for site pages because uh, uh, invoke PNP template doesn't really uh, play well with site pages. So we, we have to add the uh, fields which are required in the solution uh, manually. So we have to find a, a separate function for that. So last but not least, deploy the web part. Again, here, same story. Um, what we do you now in our case is we first um, read again the solutions and uh, publish them to the TNT app catalog. And then in the second step, we connect to all the sites defined uh, again in the solution JSON and um, check whether the app is already installed. If it's there, we make an update PNP app. If it's not there, we install it. And that's basically it. Um, so yeah, that's all the magic for um, basically automate, um, to, yeah deploy in a consistent and uh, automatic way. Uh, Fabian, I give back to you maybe to demonstrate how you use this installation. Yes. Thank you, Matthias. I'm back uh, in my Visual Studio code and I'm open up the terminal. Um, I'm already in the dev container. So um, for the demo effects and time boxing purposes, I do not run every script separately. So I did it already before. They're also uh, we showing up just the end results of the script. So we have here the deploy inside script that deploys the site templates to this site here, and the other side do not have any site templates. So there is no um, green marked commentar that is um, that's deployed anything there or nothing there. Then we have the, the build the SPVP script. That is the stuff that you already know if you're working with SPFX. So we have uh, two solutions. The solution one is built here, and the second one should up here here right and then we have also the deploy script for the for the solutions uh, we deploy that to the to the tenant app catalog and then as uh, deploy that as configured in the solution chase file to the pb config pb home and pb content side so as matthias already mentioned that uh, when I run the script, the, the, the solutions were already installed, so they were um, just updated with the script. Then you are also able to run the whole stuff in Docker Native. I built it the same Docker file that you use for the dev container um, with Docker build command. And then I run the same script natively with the docker run command. So you see that's your docker run command. And then I run the PowerShell command with a specific script that I want to run. And you see the end result is the same that I showed you before in the dev container. Same for the build SPVP script and same for the deploy SPVP script. And same, the is also working natively on my MacBook. I installed PowerShell and the PowerShell modules and Node directly on my MacBook and the same scripts are also running very well here. And for fun purposes, we all already created a mini pipeline in GitHub Actions with the docker build command to build up the Docker file. 
and run everything uh, with authentication directly in GitHub Action. So I go back to the slides. This is the last slide. Uh, the resources will be posted in the chat, I think. Uh, we have a solution on GitHub, the Buntabella installer. We have already a blog post on buntabella.ch uh, describing everything that we presented. And if you have any questions, feel free to connect with us. And thank you for your attention. Thank you.